Hey, 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 Jayone. How ye? You doing all right? We need you to be unmuted so that you can. I, I, I'm over here just talking away on mute. Yes, hi, right. Pastor. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. But we, we, you know, we didn't, we didn't pray with the preacher. Um, and so we're going to do this. We're going to do this, um, Pastor. Um, 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 we want. We just want to have a word of prayer with you. We're going to have everybody to be able to pray with you. Then we're going to put you back off our stream. We didn't pray when we when we got back together. So we give God thanks and praise, but we didn't want to hold the people up. They were looking forward to being with us. And so let's just offer a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we, your children, come now. We thank you for prayer. We thank you, dear Lord, that we can touch and agree with the speaker for this evening. We praise your name, dear Lord, that he is going to um, just calm his spirit and, and allow for you to use him as the instrument that you've used him in times past. Bless us now as we open this time, dear Lord. We give you thanks and give you praise. Be with each one on um, and that those that are coming on. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Bring you back in just a minute. Bless you. J.O.N.A., what's up? Nothing much. You just got off the music hour and we are here. It has been another full day and we have had lots of stuff going on. We had some prayers in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, music in the evening, and now we're opening up for the service. We even had some reading of the writ of the word. We even had mm -hmm. some reading of the word. Yeah, it was it was from Ileana, the Ileana conference. And I, I got to apologize to my brothers and sisters down in, 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 in Ileana. Um, they did such a wonderful job in getting that to me. Um, but technology um, is a booger. It's a booger, but um, it's all right. We're going to work it out anyhow. How was your day? How are things going with you? Um, and and glad that you're on with us. The folk are coming in. They're, they're, they're yeah. be with us. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Our numbers climbing. Yeah, it's been busy for me. I've been on air, off air. Mm -hmm. Midterms are still looming their head, and you know we're we're keeping it moving. But you know, glad to be on tonight. Thank you for having me. Yeah, are people being blessed by this? You think people are being blessed um, by the time that we're spending the little bit of time that we're spending? I know that you know. I know the messages have been powerful, but the other times, yes. yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's making an impact. I think um, you know we're reaching those people. It's not about the large; it's about the small numbers. And and yeah, prayerfully, we will continue to bless people. Sure, sure, sure. Well, we are good. We're glad that the Lord has blessed us. And if you're in the comment section, we want you to um, give a, a shout out. That we know um, Cookie Holly, um, our prayer coordinator for our noon time, is on with us, and she um, is right there with us. Bless her. Um, we are also um, and want to be involved um, with uh, those that that are. You need to go and tell somebody. You need to go and share yes. this. But what, what, what do they need to do? You, you you're technologically savvy. Um, what do they need to do, Jan? What do they need to do? Yes, with some with a few things, I, I do know a bit about tech. Uh, go ahead and like, share, comment. Um, we are doing this. We're streaming on a few different platforms. I think, yeah, mainly just YouTube and Facebook. So share it with a friend on Facebook, Messenger, on YouTube. Go ahead and go down to the bottom. Click those three buttons and click share. And you can share it in text. You can share a link. You can share it in Instagram. You can share it on Snapchat. So share it to everyone. You don't know who it can bless. So don't limit other people. Just put it out there and allow the Lord to do his work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's that's with everything that we're doing. We just want to be able to take over the the, the media. Um, let yeah. Jesus be seen, be known. This is our this is Jesus being lifted up. This is Jesus mm -hmm. being lifted up. And he'll he'll do the drawing. He'll do the drawing. Don't you worry about it. He'll do the drawing. Go with both yeah. in the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, tonight, 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 we are blessed. We are blessed to have a, a another powerful message. And our focus is still on the passion of the Christ, the passion yep. of the Christ. Um, we're glad that we have heard from our own Dr. Jones on Saturday evening. We're glad that we heard from um, um, Pastor Paul Young last night in the triumphal entry. And tonight we're going into the temple, J.L. Nay. We temple. are? Yeah, we're going into the temple. What do you think? What do you think um, might we hear as, as, as in that regard as, as going into the temple? I don't know. I mean, there are a few angles you can go to um, from this. I know yesterday we went to, uh, we were talking about the triumphal entry where Jesus was on a donkey. Now we're in the point of the story where Jesus goes into the temple. Um, I think that we're definitely going to hear some conversation about, you know, in the way of how you're supposed to behave and the way other people may show you how is the right way, but Jesus will ultimately bring you into the right way of how you're supposed to um, show a Christ-like personality. Preach to this. Don't preach the preacher's sermon. Don't preach the preacher's sermon. Don't oh, no, 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 never. <laughs> never, never. You're going deep now. You're going deep now. That's, that's all yeah. right. That's all right. 
Praise the Lord for you. So glad that um, that um, everything that you're doing and everything that others are doing, and we give God thanks and praise. Um, yeah. We're saying amen to everybody. Um, the pastor is Pastor Jimmy Atkins. He's a veteran. Um, he's from down south way um, and, um, and has lived in different locations. Um, he pastors the Evanston, the Evanston, I believe, and the All Nations Church. I think those are the two churches. He'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, he has um, allowed the Lord to use him, and we give God thanks and praise that he is part of um, the ministry team. Um, he's a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of, of, of opportunity for the Lord to be able to use him, and we'll give God thanks and praise for him. Yes, Thank amen. Let's go ahead. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and ask you, yes, I prayed um, when he came on, and I'm going to ask you to pray. Um, for the service this evening. Um, we'd like to bathe these in prayer. And then we're going to just go ahead and share um, the song um, that has been chosen, that has been chosen for us to be able to open up our service on this evening. We've got a special treat though, JNA. You introduced yeah. one of his members to us and we're going to be able to play him at the end um, um, again. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Right, right, right. Yes. Always love that young people come on and share their talents. So let us offer prayer. And again, guys, if you guys haven't had any prayer requests, please put them in the chat and we'll definitely keep those in mind. Let us pray. Dear Holy Father, we thank you for allowing us to come here once again. And uh, we thank you that we've had a good day of um, bathing in your word. We had prayers and we had um, conversation about the passion of the Christ. We ask you to continue to bless all the people who are a part of this program. Bless the listeners. Allow them to understand and grasp the words that the pastor is about to preach. Bless the pastor. Anoint him. Bless him. Allow the words coming out of his mouth to reach the individuals that need to hear you at this moment. Uh, we continue to put those affected with COVID in prayer, and we continue to put those who are having a hard time or maybe even a hard day in prayer. Allow them to be comforted and allow them to understand and know that you are there and that you will see them through to the end. Uh, we thank you for allowing uh, Pastor Bryant and myself to come on today and introduce this. Uh, we ask you to uh, bless those who are to come on and uh, thank you for allowing this program to come today and be on well with all the tech things. Continue to bless the tech and help it to uh, not fuzz up and be um, right so that all listeners can hear the word of the Lord. Uh, we ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Glad that um, you are are, are, are there um, at our conference office. Praise the Lord. And the Lord has blessed you. Um, we get, let, let, thank the Lord that the, 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 the building is available to you um, and that you are being able to use it um, during this time frame in ministry. In ministry. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. To do. We want to be able to use what the Lord has blessed us with in ministry. It shouldn't be just a mausoleum, but it should be used. Come on, somebody say amen in ministry. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. After, after, after this song, the next voice that you will hear will be our friend, um, the man um, that the Lord is going to use, Pastor Jimmy Atkins. Be blessed, everybody. <laughs> Jesus. 
He's a perfect love that crossed out all fear. I give you Jesus. He's the water that you drink and never thirst again. I, I give you Jesus. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Pastor Jimmy Atkins. I am the pastor of All Nations Fellowship and uh, the First Seventh Adventist Church of Evanston. I just want to give a shout out to all the saints who are serving at All Nations Fellowship and the First Seventh Adventist Church of Evanston. And all of you saints out there who have tuned in to us this evening and have been following us each night. I pray that you have been blessed. I know that I have. I know that I have. Tonight's sermon is about the cleansing of the temple. The cleansing of the temple. The temple cleansed. Uh, let's have a short word of prayer. Father, we need your Holy Spirit. And just like your servant has just sung we need Jesus. We need to see Christ Jesus today lifted up high and glorified. And so, Father, I'm just asking you now to hide me behind of the cross of Jesus Christ and may people be drawn to him. This is our purpose. This is why we're here. And we thank you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It is a cleansing. I didn't know if you knew it or not, but there's actually 
two temple cleansing. The first one is mentioned as Jesus begins his ministry in Jerusalem. And you'll find that in John chapter 2. So if you would, please take your Bibles and read along with me as I go. I just want to consider basically two texts of Scripture tonight. The first one is John chapter 2, verses 13 through 19. And then the second text of Scripture will be Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 through 17. That is John chapter 2, verses 13 through 19. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version for John. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to the Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them out of the temple with the sheep and oxen, and he poured out the coins and the money changers, and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. King James Version says, take these things hence. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, what sign do you show us? For doing these things, Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. John chapter 2, verses 13 through 19. Our second reading is found in Matthew chapter 21. Uh, this is at the end of Jesus' ministry here on earth. He's about to approach the cross. He's about to go into Pilate's hall. He's about to be scourged. And now he is here going to the temple and he sees the same thing once again. So follow with me to Matthew chapter 21 verses 12 through 17. And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all those, all who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, it is written, my house, my house, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thee, of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests, who? The chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant. And they said to him, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes. Have you never read out of the mouth of babe, out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise? And leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there, cleansing the temple. Cleansing the temple. Three times Jesus had, had come to Jerusalem to, to worship for the Passover service. You see, this was one of the Jewish high days. And even right now, around us, Jews all over the world are celebrating the Passover. Celebrating the Passover. As it was alluded to, I, I grew up in the deep south, down in Columbus, Georgia. My siblings and I were raised by, by our grandmother, my, my, my mother's mother, our maternal grandmother. Our mother had passed away when, in 1968. In 1968, she bled to death while lying on a gurney in a hospital. The staff refused to treat her. This was the Deep South in 1968. Black lives did not matter. Brown lives did not matter. Red lives did not matter. Yellow lives did not matter. People of color did not matter. For some things, the more they change, the more they stay the same. I digress just a little bit. But I have fond memories of my grandmother in the springtime, Easter, 
During the Eastern Passover time, she would go through this cleaning, cleansing process of the house. You see, we lived in a shotgun house down in Columbus, Georgia on Forsyth Street. And I don't know if you know what a shotgun house is, but the idea is that you could stand at one door and point your gun in that door and the bullet will go straight through the house without touching a wall. It was a shotgun house. Nevertheless, every year in the spring, it was spring cleaning time. Spring cleaning time. The bedding needed to be aired out. It was, it was a painstakingly tedious ordeal in which we children dreaded. We didn't look forward to this spring cleaning, but it was something which was needed to ensure the health and well-being of all who lived in the house. And what I find ironic is as I got older, I began to understand why a spring cleaning. You see, my mother was a Methodist. My grandmother was a Methodist. And Easter for her was a bare, very big day. It was a high day. It, it represented for her the, the, the fresh beginning, a fresh beginning, newness of life. Spring cleaning was a reminder that Jesus is he who, which provides a fresh beginning. So in John's gospel, after being anointed by the Holy Spirit at his baptism, he turns water into wine. This is a prelude of things to come. I don't know if you knew it or not, but in John's gospel, this motif, this motif of, of, of water and wine comes up repeatedly throughout the gospel of John. You'll find this once again at the end when Jesus is dead on the cross. When, when, when they want to verify is he dead or not, the soldier takes his spear and sticks it in Jesus' side. And the scripture says what comes out is blood and water. And once again, he's in Gethsemane. He's in the garden of Gethsemane. And he's praying earnestly for the for, for, for his life right now, and he's pleading with the Father, and we are reminded just then that as he is pleading with the Father, out comes blood and water, blood mixed with water. He begins to shed his blood at Gethsemane. In my imagination, I can see Jesus as he leads his disciples onward from Cana, from that from that uh, that wedding to Jerusalem, he is building a ground force, an army, and there are some Marines in there, and these are needed. To, they are needed and required for his for the building of his kingdom. The Marines are needed to provide the needed security, and the army is to provide the necessary stability. Lest we forget the navy, he gives the needed sea power, sea support. So he calls Peter and. Andrew, James, and John, four men who were acquainted with the sea. No man-made weapons are needed. Jesus, our heavenly Father, will provide the needed armor. On their waist, they have the truth. On their chest, they have righteousness. On their feet, they have the gospel of peace. On their head, they have the helmet of salvation. In their hands, they have the sword of the spirit. In their, in which the word, which is the word of God. In the other hand, they have the shield of faith. Yes, this is Jesus, the commander in chief. He is the one who is going to be calling the cadence now. In my mind's eye, I can see Jesus calling his disciples to attention. Saints of the most high God. God, a tin hut. Our mission is to go to Jerusalem and celebrate the Passover of the Lord your God and the Lord my God. This would be the first of three Passovers which Christ would celebrate with his disciples. Forward, march, left, right, left, right, left. We're heading to Jerusalem. We're heading to the temple to worship. Right, you're right. We're heading to the temple to pray. You're right. You're right. We're heading to the temple to praise. You're right. You're right. You're he we're heading to the temple to give the glory to God. You're right. You're right. You're left, right, left. Saints, halt. What is this I hear? I hear the bleeding of sheep and the lowing of oxen and the cooing of doves, Jesus is saying. I hear the clanging of money changing. There's perversion in the temple. There's perversion in the camp. Some, 
something, my friend, has gone wrong. Somebody has slipped into the camp and has misled the people and now they're leading them astray. The holy temple of God has been transformed into a shopping center. The noise of commerce was louder than the singers in the temple. It was louder than he who was preaching. It was louder than they that were raising hosannas. It was louder than the people who were who 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 was who was who was worshiping their God. The praise could not be heard over the noise of life. The promises of earthly riches had caused the praises of God to wane. The wisdom of men and women was has supplanted the sure word of prophecy. Where is your God, they say? Where is he? Jesus stood up and says, here I am. At the beginning of his ministry, Jesus is confronted with having no, no having to perform a spring cleaning removing that which is which defiles at the beginning of his ministry i say jesus has to cleanse the house braiding cords together he produces a whip and this was not the time for human wisdom or logic. It was not the time to sit down and start a bargaining process. The people had gone astray and Jesus, your Jesus and my Jesus has now have come to his father's house to worship and in his father's house is defilement. And so Jesus needed to cleanse the temple. It was a spring. It was spring. And thus he needed to perform a spring cleaning. Take these things hence, Jesus says. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Do not make my father's house a mall. Do not make my father's house a shopping center. Get this stuff out of here. He chases the hirelings out of his temple. Please note, although Jesus chased them off, he never told them they could not come back. They were welcome back as long as they respected him whose house it is. The house of God should never be, be a, a well, the house of God should always be a welcoming place. At the moment, at, 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 and at that moment, a flash of divinity is displayed and the temple courtyard is cleared. The people now began to understand somewhat in whose presence they were in. Those who had made God's temple a den of robbers are now gone. And Jesus get down to business, teaching his disciples how to disciple others and teaching the people. I don't know if you heard me correctly, but Jesus is teaching his disciples the importance of discipling. And so he begins to teach the people and they are listening to Jesus. They are following Jesus and they are learning the importance of, of, of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and preparing others to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus is in the business of multiplication. I would go on to say that Jesus is in the in the business of of exponential increases. Jesus will go on from there and heal the sick, raise the dead, open the eyes of the blind, teaching his disciples that they must address the needs. Jesus goes to visit a woman at a well in Samaria. Waking up early one morning, he needed to go through Samaria. He could have taken another route, but he needed to go through Samaria. He needed to meet a woman at a well at noontime. It was high noon, and so she is there. Jesus is there waiting for her to come to the well. He knew that she comes out there in the heat of the day. She could not come out there at any other time. The women would not tolerate it. They would not allow her to be there to get the water at the early morning. They were afraid of this woman. She was a Samaritan, but she was in need of salvation, my friends. So he went outside of the traditions of the day to save the life of someone who was created in his image. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying here, but Jesus was a Jewish carpenter. She was a Samaritan. And in the eyes 
of the Jewish people, the Samaritans were about as worse as dogs. And so this Jesus, your Jesus and my Jesus does the unimaginable. He purposed in his heart, wakes up early one morning and he begins to go out on a long journey and he needs to get there at noon. And I can imagine that the that the disciples are trying to keep up and they're getting winded. But Jesus is saying to them, if you're going to if you're going to be in this business, you need to be in shape. You need to keep yourself in shape. You need to be able to keep up, my friends. So Work on it, my friends, work on it. So the disciples needed to know that the word was made flesh has came to save whosoever, whosoever will. And Jesus is showing us that you don't have to be a Christian for me to talk to you. You don't have to be a Christian for me to talk to to you. So what if she had five husbands and one and the one whom she is with now is not hers? When Jesus was done with her, she goes back to the small village and began to preach and, and, and recognize and the people began to recognize the transformed life that has happened within her. And they want to hear this gospel of Jesus Christ themselves. So she leads them back to where Jesus is sitting at the well. And Jesus shows his disciple what a harvest looks like. Jesus says, as this group comes rushing towards him, look, the harvest is white now. It is ready to be harvested. But where are those who will harvest? So Jesus is showing us that if we would be willing, if we are mindful, if we are careful, if we are willing, we can share the gospel with whosoever, and then we can disciple them to share the gospel with whosoever. And by doing this, God's kingdom is multiplied, you see, my friends. The reason why the church exists is to build God's kingdom. It is not a social network. It is not a social house for saints. It is a social house for sinners. It is a place where sinners come to seek the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus goes out of his way early one morning to go to visit this lady. And if you were to look at the map, you would understand that Jesus and his disciples had walked in excess of 20 miles. And some of us won't even go next door to visit our neighbor. Man, we've got to do something. We have got to do something. Some folks will go halfway around the world to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But if I ask you, what's your neighbor's name? You can't tell me your neighbor's name. You've been living beside your neighbor, door that right next door to your neighbor for years, and you don't know your neighbor's name. You don't know their needs. Jesus knew that this woman needed to hear the gospel, so he wakes up early one one morning and he goes to Samaria so that she he could snatch her out of the hands of Satan. And if and if she is willing, she could go back to her community and share the gospel that Jesus has preached to her. And then he could snatch this whole community of Sychar away from the grips of Satan. And that's exactly what happens, my friend. When the Holy Spirit does his work, great things happen. Jesus also takes his disciples across the lake. And while he's going across the lake, Satan must have heard wind that Jesus is coming. So he sends a strong wind out over the lake. He starts to see, the sea begins to, to rock, uh, rock and roll and it begins to fill the boat. And I can hear those disciples now, Lord, because Jesus is back on the stern. And he's sound asleep because he's not worried about what Satan is doing out there. He could sleep during the storm, but his disciples have never experienced this thing before. So they go to Jesus and say, don't you care that we perish? What man, don't you know that you have, don't you know that you have God in the flesh on the boat with you? They are about to find out. So Jesus stands up in the middle of a storm and he says to the wind, calm down. And he says, I'm sorry, he says to the to the sea, calm down. And he says to the wind, shut up. And then the, 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 the these brothers look at each other, look at Jesus, and they say, who is this? Oh, my friends, we're still talking about 
We're still talking about spring cleaning. We're still talking about spring cleaning. When the storms of life are pummeling you, call on Jesus. He'll tell the winds to shut up. When this, when it seems as though your boat is about to sink, call on Jesus. He'll tell the sea to be still. Call on Jesus. He's a friend in your time of need. Call on Jesus. He's your lawyer in a courtroom. I say, call on Jesus. He's your doctor in a sick room. Call on Jesus. He's your banker when you're down to your last two mites. I say, call on Jesus when death cold hands are reaching out to you. Call him in the middle of the night. Call him at the noon time. Call him at the evening time. He is an on time God. All who are crooked ran like roaches when the light was turned on at the temple on that day. But the ones who were there to worship the almighty God, they stayed put. They didn't go anywhere, my friends. And so Jesus had a ready audience. He could now begin to teach the people what the true gospel is versus what somebody had thought it should be. The people were being fleeced by those who were supposed to be over them and in charge of them. So Jesus had to get rid of some of them as well. Some of them need to have their credentials pulled. Some of them needed to have their taken out of the pulpit. Some of them needed to, 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 be, to be taken out of the ministry, that not taken out of the church. Don't get that mixed up. But my friends, when we are misleading God's people and taking them down a, a wrong path, son, the Holy Spirit is going to step in and the Spirit is going to do his work. So now I can see Jesus now. He's over in the book of Luke and he stands up. He stands up and he begins to read Luke chapter 4 verses 18 and 19. The spirit is a Lord, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the liberty to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. He has set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. My friend, this is this is a spring cleaning Jesus is about to do again. And it's, in, it's his third Passover now. And at the beginning of his ministry, Jesus starts out cleaning the temple in Jerusalem. You would think that after three years of watching Jesus healing the sick, raising the dead, healing the lame, strang straightening up those who are bent over, calming the storms, casting out demons, you would think that after watching him feed 5,000 people, 5,000 men and not in, not counting the women and children, you would think that after after feeding 4,000 more that and, and healing the blind, you would think by now that the powers to be will understand that this is no mere man, but no, 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 no. They have a power struggle going on in their head. And their interest is, their interest is, is to just to keep the power. They don't care about this man, Jesus, this man who walks on water. And I know they've heard the stories. They've seen the healings. This man who catches fish by, by speaking the word. This man can cause the, the mute to speak. This man can speak the word and someone is healed across town. This man is no near, is no mere man. No, 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 no. Let's not get that twisted. He is, he is God. He is the, the word. He is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. And so now they, they are having a difficult time with Jesus. So you would think that the powers to be, those who are supposed to be in charge of God's house, would be about his father's business. Caring for the sick, feeding the hungry, clothing the clothless, giving water to those who thirst, providing shelter for the homeless, feeding God's sheep, tending God's lambs. You would think, you really would think that Jesus would not have to clean house, perform this this is this April cleaning, this spring cleaning once again. But when Jesus shows up for the Passover for the third time, he is confronted with a deja vu moment. It's happening all over again. 
a reoccurring nightmare of a scene he had encountered at the beginning of his ministry is taking place at the end of his earthly ministry. The foxes are managing the hen house. They are devouring the people's living. Sincere worshipers are being taken, taken advantage of. Extortion is rampant. This is God's house for crying out loud. What has happened? What has happened? At the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he cleansed the temple, but he refers to it as his father's house. He had to. He had not built up enough credibility. If you want to get something done, you need to build up your credibility, my friend. So Jesus, my Jesus, your Jesus, the living word, he who created the heavens and the earth and all that's in them is, or, or in them, the one who speaks to animals and they obey him, he has built, has to build up credibility. So after the people are, after the people on the sea heard him speak to the winds and the wave, they obeyed his voice. Crossing over to the other side and delivering a demon-possessed man who was living in a cave, the demons obeyed his voice. After he had delivered the woman at the well from her sinful lifestyle, this same Jesus who healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law, yes, that Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father, I'm talking about Jesus, the Great I Am, has to build up credibility. He has to prove that he is God the Son, the one who visited Abraham before destroying Sodom and Gomorrah, the one who wrestled with Jacob, the one who met Moses on the Mount, uh, at Mount Sinai and handed him the Ten Commandments, the one Nebuchadnezzar seen walking around in a fiery furnace with three young, men, young Hebrew men. That Jesus needs to build credibility. It is the same Jesus that Ezekiel saw sitting in heaven, high and lifted up in his temple. That Jesus, he has to build up credibility once again with his people. But he didn't mind, my friend, because Jesus is love. So he had to. He had to. He fed 5,000. And after that, he fed four more thousand. Heal, he healed the lame and, and the paralyzed. After he had called a woman, called, called a woman to attention who had been bent over for many years, he healed the centurion's servant, raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, walked on water, raised the widow of Nian's, Nian's son from the dead, healed the Syrophoenician child, gave sight to the blind, restored a woman caught in adultery, rest resurrected his friend Lazarus. He arrives at the temple in Jerusalem once again with his disciples. Unlike the first time, there are no sheep or oxen in the temple court. So I'm assuming that they had learned something by, by their first interacting with Jesus. But don't get it twisted, my friends. But that does not matter anyhow. There was a complete, uh, there has to be a complete about face. God does not call us to make a 90 degree turn. Call, God calls us to make an about face, a turn, a turn around, a complete 180 degrees. Go in the opposite direction, John is saying to each one of us. Why would you die? Our God is saying, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Make an about face, my friend. Make an about face. Forward, March, Jesus, I can hear him saying, and they marched them out of the temple courtyards, those who had been buying and selling and doing all these things uh, in God's house. He has to clean the temple once again. But three years later, this crew has, has slipped back into their old habits, my friend. I don't know how it happens, but it happens. Sometimes we, 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 we might go a while and then all of a sudden we slip. Nobody's watching. And with nobody watching, we can do some stuff. And so they began to bring things back into the temple court. But this, the first time Jesus shows up on the scene, and John is the only gospel writer that captures this interaction. He says, take these things hence. Make my father's house a house. You have made my father's house a house of merchandise. You uh, don't make my father's house a 
I'm sorry, make my make not my father's house a house of merchandise. John 2 16, the King James Version reads, after providing, after proving to the people that he was no ordinary man, after proving to the people that he is the great creator, when he entered the temple, of course. The second time after he has proven to the people that he could heal, that he can call out the devil, that he can send him running. After he has done all this thing, after he has proved to the people that he is the one that is able to speak to a storm and tell it to shut up. This is now a different this is the same Jesus, but now he has credibility. So when he shows up the second time, the first time he says when he comes into the temple, this is my father's house but the second time he shows up it is this word it is my house this is my house jesus is saying i have built up credibility you have watched me for these past three or so years and you know who i am i am the alpha and the omega i am the beginning in the end. So now Jesus is saying to each one of us, he's saying to those men who are who are who are taking advantage of the of the of the gifts that God has given them and using them in nefarious ways. He is saying to them, this is my house and my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. He says, my house. So he ran them out. This is my house. This house is called by my name. This house represents who I am. I am he that was, he that is, he who is to come. This is my house, Jesus says. You are profaning my house. On his way to the cross, he had to stop and make some adjustments to the system. After that, he had done the religious elite. After, he had, after what he had done to the religious elite, had and has still not gotten it, He, what else could he have done? What else could he have done? He knew he had a, bear, a cross to bear. Blood and water, that blood and water motif is permeating his ministry. Jesus is about to eat the Passover, and he makes the announcement to his fellow, his fellow disciples. He makes the announcement that they are about to drink, drink the wine of his blood, and they are about to eat the bread that represents his body. And now as he goes into Gethsemane, as he goes into Gethsemane, he began to, to sweat great drops of blood and water. And though before he would be pierced in, on his side and the water and the blood would come out. The, and so we, he wanted to save some of those in the of the upper room of the upper crust. So he didn't run everybody off. He, he was calling out to the Sanhedrin. He was calling out to the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees by performing this last cleansing. Maybe somebody would get it. Maybe somebody is listening. Maybe somebody wants to be saved. He is not the business in the business of destroying life. I think you remember first uh, John chapter three, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but the world through him might be saved i read that to you one more time god for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved i'm a i'm, I'm astonished my friend as you walk you see Jesus walking with you and you don't get it. I don't know. I can't understand it, my friend. How is it that these dignitaries, how is it that these brothers in high places did not come to see who they were in the presence of? They watched him heal. They watched him call down he and, and send, send demons to flight. They watched him do all these things and yet they resisted the love of Christ. They resisted the love of Christ. Oh, my friends, God won't always wrestle with us. He wants to save you. He wants to save me. He's in the business of salvation. 
And he's doing everything. He's done everything he could. It is just a bad thing that when Jesus shows up at his house to worship with his people, he has to first clean the house. Get rid of the garbage that has come into the place. Things that should have never come in were in. God is in the business of saving life. Tonight, as you meditate on Jesus as the music plays, I want you to think about all those things that have happened over the course of your life. I know it's easy to think about the bad stuff, but even as you think about the bad stuff, I want you to remember and call to remembrance, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to remember how God delivered each one of us, even while we were going through a bad situation. He has never left us or forsaken us. Think about your deliverances. How this world, which is in a true mess, Our God is still reaching out to save somebody. So I just want you to listen to the music. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame.
my friends. When John defines love, he doesn't get into some philosophical or theological discussion about it. He simply says that God is love. God is love. And so God proves it. In the gospel, he says, in, in, the, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Then we get to verse 14, it says, and then the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld him as the only, as the, as the, as the glory of the Father. John is not missing word. He's not trying to, 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 to come up with some, some theological deep thing. He's just giving it as it is. And I want this right here to sink in right now because this is my appeal. This is my appeal. God is love. And God proves it. He, he, he proves it, my friend, because what God does is God comes down in the flesh. And he offers, becomes the sacrifice that neither one of us could become to satisfy the penalty of sin. God provides the sacrifice, and he says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And so I, I just want you to, to just think about this. Close your eyes just for a moment with me while I give you this description of what happened. And as Jesus is now being about to lead to the cross, he is first scourged. He is scourged. And this is not some 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 mediocre whip. This whip is told we are told this whip has glass. It has been braided into it. So every time that Roman soldier hits our Jesus with this with this whip, it rips his skin. It rips the skin off of his back. It rips the skin off of his buttocks. You have to understand something, my friends, that Jesus is now stripped but naked and they are whipping him because of our sins. He is taking on the penalty for us. God is love. And he proves it. Would you give him a chance with your life? I wish I had the time to tell you about my calling, but time doesn't suffice. But I'll say this. God has made sure that my bread and water was sure for my family and myself. He's always taking care of us. He's an on-time God. You can trust him. Even when the darkness is so dark, you could feel it. He is there with you and he will deliver. So I want you to give your life to Jesus today. If you have never done it, or if you have walked away from Christ and you're hearing this message, I'm pleading with you. I am pleading with you. Come back to Jesus. Let's pray. Oh, Father, it's hard for us to fathom the idea that you, your son, became flesh and dwelt among us. And then experience the heinous torturous death on a cross so that I can have freedom so that I can be redeemed. That motif about the water and the blood, oh God, reminds us that the water cleanses. The blood redeems. The Holy Spirit transforms. So throughout the Gospel of John, we read about the word, the water 
the blood, the Holy Spirit. The three of them working together for our salvation. But it's the blood. It's the blood. That redeeming, cleansing blood that we are thankful for. We don't, we deserve it. And you know we don't deserve it. But we need it. So thank you, Father, we pray. Thank you, I pray, for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. In his precious name I pray, amen. Amen. My friends, you have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the rest of this week. Come back tomorrow evening. The Holy Spirit is going to do a great work. I promise you. Pastor Brent, you're on mute. On mute. I'm a little, I don't, hold, hold my mute while I shout. That's spring <laughs> cleaning. We need that spring cleaning. Doc, Amen. you so blessed by your mercy, mercy. Hashtag Praise spring cleaning, FT Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They're in the chat, just, 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 just talking up a storm. God bless you, Pastor Atkins. God bless you. Appreciate you. Thank the Lord for the word, making Thank it plain, you. making it so that we could march um, and that we could be where the Lord wants for us to be at. We appreciate you so much. Amen. Oh, Thank you so very much. God bless you. God bless you. Jayone, Jayone. I don't know. She called it, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I have my notes here. Um, taking notes during the sermon. Very powerful. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you very very much. blessed. Very blessed. Mm -hmm. And those that are in the chat or those that we need to share this with somebody, they can go ahead. They can stream this later on. Encourage somebody to allow yes. the Lord to come in and do that spring cleaning in their life. Allow the Lord yes. to, to do what as Pastor Atkins has said, um, to be able to make that um, calling and election sure. We give God thanks and praise. Uh, Amen. That praise, the praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody, praise the Lord. We're getting ready to close out. Jay and we got to close out. We got to close out. No, yeah. yeah um, tomorrow we'll be right back. We'll be right back with same Pastor, time. Yes, with Pastor um, Eric Bell. The teaching of parables, the teaching of parables. You know, we've got a theme going on, um, Janelle, where we are we are addressing, yeah. dealing with the T's, the T's. We had the week begins, we had the triumphal entry, and we had tonight the um, um, the, the, the the temple, cleansing of the temple. Mm -hmm. and, and tomorrow we'll be dealing with the teaching of parables, the teaching of parables. What a great God that we serve. We thank the Lord that we were able to um, um, just be able to come together and, yes. we'll go ahead and close out with the word of prayer. But you want to spend some time with us tomorrow. We're going to get that conversation going tomorrow at one o'clock, mm -hmm. one o'clock, yeah. one o'clock yeah. tomorrow evening at what, what's some special um, feature we got tomorrow for the uh, music ministry. Anything that you got special? Yes, for? we do. Let me go look at my uh, little outline watch here. Watch. Call out some names. We have a New co-host. We have a new co-host. I'm really excited. Um, one of my good friends is going to come on. And then we have um, someone who used to arrange music and then someone who directs and dabbles in playing. They do a little bit of everything. So very exciting. Same time. I don't know, Pastor, can you give us a rundown of the times that people need to be on and watching? Tremendous, tremendous. Thank you, um, um, my dear sister. She so she keeps me organized. Seven o'clock. We start with morning prayer. With morning yes. prayer. Um, seven o'clock. We start with morning prayer. That's Eastern Standard Time. Six o'clock Central Standard Time. You want to be on? Um, we, we may um, go around a little, a couple different places and be a part of that. And then we have the reading. We got a, a, a full reading. Oh. Of, full reading yeah. of the gospel. At nine o'clock. <clears throat> city elders um, have put mm -hmm. this. Out and they're going to be reading the on um, the gospels or how many of the gospels on tomorrow um, at eleven o'clock, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock Eastern Standard Time, eleven o'clock Central. We have our noontime prayer. We have our noontime yeah. prayer. The Holly has a group of individuals coming on and they're mm -hmm. praying, they're bathing this thing in prayer. And then, and then, and the, one o'clock, one o'clock. You want to come on and you want to be a part of it, being engaged with us in this conversation with the doctors, with the doctors. We call the doctors of theology. Mm -hmm. Thanks and praise. Um, yeah. Later on. We'll have some more reading of the Gospels. And then, and then, 6 o'clock um, Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock um, Central Standard Time. Yep. 
what what they can look forward to. They get some 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 dabbling and dibbling and and, and everything. Yes, a little bit of everything. We have, as you would call it, uh, uh, what what is it? The multi. You got. Um, I forget the word escapes me, but we have a little bit of everything in the show. What's the word? Is it versatile? Variety show. That's the word that you've been using. Come on, Pastor. You go help me. Variety show. Pastor Brian has been saying variety show all week. And the one day I said, I do not remember. Um, it is a variety show. We have a game at the end. Uh, we have music that will be pray, excuse me, played throughout, um, showcasing the, the uh, people that are coming on, their talent. And in the beginning, we talk a little bit about them, and we talk a little bit with them about how it relates to the topic for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Very good. And then right. at, at 7, um, 6 o'clock um, um, Central Standard Time, another mighty word um, from a mighty message. Mm -hmm. With a mighty message, we thank the Lord for our messenger this evening, Pastor yeah. Atkins. We're talking too much. We should be meditating upon that, um, cleaning the house, that um, cleaning the temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Lord wants for us to be clean, wants for us to be ready for Him when He comes. So let's go ahead, um, lay, lay this to the rest. Um, you know where you need to be at on tomorrow. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer to close out. Father in heaven, now as we leave this place, but never your presence, as we um, go and share with somebody, go and talk with somebody, go and encourage somebody, Lord, allow for us to use our telephones and our our, our computers and our, our tablets and, and just be able to say, you need to listen to this message by this man. Um, Lord, let us march on just as you had the disciples to march. Let us then see you cleansing, cleansing the temple and allow for us, dear Lord, to realize that we are that temple that needs to be cleansed ourselves. And you're more than able by the blood, hallelujah, by the blood of the lamb to cleanse us. Keep us toward this end. Bless each one now. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, beloved. God bless you. God bless you. Um, we will look to be able to um, connect with you on tomorrow. Be in yeah. Praise the Lord for you. Good night. Good night. Have a good evening.